and welcome to our session. Together with my colleague Erdokia, we will present you our new features in the smart, smart controls and how they easy can be adopted in your application. So, and let's see our agenda for the next 20 minutes. The first topic is related to the daytime and the filtering in the smart filter bar, how we can integrate it, what is the control that we provided to you and uh, how we improve our UI. After that, we'll continue with the time zone integration in the smart field. The second topic of our presentation will be related to the money part and here we will talk about currencies and unit of measure and how the custom code list is integrated from the backend, what is the functionality which is given to us and uh, how we can benefit with it. Uh, the last but not least, we will talk about the screen reader and keyboard handling uh, and the improvement in the value help dialog. Let me continue with our demo. We prepared for you uh, one application which is pretty close as a, a functionality to the sales order application. And I'll talk about more about the smart filter bar and the, in details for the date filters, which are here. The first one which I'll talk about is the date of production. I'll show some metadata related to it. Here, you can see that date of production is from type EDM date time with display format date and filter restriction single. What we'll have in that case, surrendering our smart filter bar, you see that we have a lot of predefined filters which are uh, make our daily job easier. And for example, we have filter like today, tomorrow, first day of this week. In the same time, we give the options for picking exact date which you want from the calendar itself. And you can see how our UI looks and that it's really cool. Here we use our new, new uh, layout and uh, let's see our next filter. Here we'll talk about the document date. You can see that again, the type is the same, but we have different filter restriction. In that case, it is an interval. What means for us? This means that in our query, which we will send to the backend, we will have selected the interval. But let's see what we have in the smart filter bar in that case. Again, you can see that we have a lot of predefined options that uh, make your daily job easier. For example, if you want to collect the data for the first day of this year till today, you can select directly year to date as a filter. At the same time, again, you can uh, select your custom range and uh, it will appear of, in your filter query. So you most like you saw that in both cases for date of production and document date, we have filter like today but it is appeared differently uh, in our query. You can see how for data production, because it is with filter restrictions single and uh, it is corresponding to our backend definition, you see that we have an equal uh, in our query and the date itself. In the case of document date, you can see that here we have a range. The reason for this is that our filter restriction is interval. And again, it is corresponding to our backend definition. So let me continue with the third one, which is really interesting. Here we will talk about creation date and time. So in that case, our definition is from different type. Here we have EDM date time offset. Again, the future restriction is interval. And as you saw, this means that we have an interval in our query. But what, what else we have than the previous filter? You can see here, again, the predefined semantic options, which are dynamically change uh, every day. And you can see that we have from two options. And here we have date and time. What this means? That I can pick exact time from which I want to start my query. 
and same from the end of the query that I can specify the period itself. It can be, for example, for two hours or for more, it just depends for what we need. And as you saw in general, this, these three filters are looks really similar each other. I'll show you how easy you can enable this functionality for your application. There are two options. First one is if you want to be applied for all your filters, which are from the EDM uh, date time with display format date. And as I saw, show you with filter restriction single or interval and for date time offset set with filter restriction interval. In that case, I just need to put property use date range type equal to true on my smart filter bar level and all, all, without any other change, all my filter will be rendered with the new dynamic date range control. But what if I want it for just for some of my filters? In that case, we give the opportunity to the app developers to add control configuration for the filter which they wanted. And they just need to add the condition type with this namespace and it will be rendered again dynamic date range control for them. Why I talk about dynamic date range control? Because it's a standalone control, which you, if you need it for something else in your application, you, you can customize it and add it. You can read more about this in our demo kit documentation. So let me continue in our detailed page. So you can see here more details about our product. In that case, it is a PC. Here I want to talk about more about the businesses which are operating worldwide. Here we have a really special case in the case of when we talk about date and times and uh, which time zone it is. Here I'll point your attention to production time. So what we have here, you can see that in the different tabs we have different continents. And what's happening the time in that case? You can see that in my time zone, Sofia, it is uh, seven o'clock. The same time in Asia and in America will be different. And I'll show you how the data is will be automatically formatted without any change on the developer side. Just the bound property, which is with the time zone, is changed. And you can see that it is taken for Asia time zone, that it's 11.16. In America, Chicago time zone, you can see that is 11.46. And as I talk about the bound property, here I, I have it displayed and I'll edit it. And we'll show to you wh what will happen. So right now you can see that we use America Chicago. And just when I change it, for example, to New York, and it's this correct time zone, you can see that it's automatically recalculated to 1246. Same will be happen if I change it to Los Angeles. So you can see how easy the calculation is done directly in the application without any action from the application side. It is coming out of the box, box from the framework itself. So I think that this feature is really important from the businesses which are operating worldwide and will make their daily basis work uh, really easier. So this all from my side, I'll hand over to my colleague Evdokia and uh, she will continue with the money part of our pre presentation. Hello, also from myself. Uh, like my colleague Dobromiro already introduced me, my name is Sezdoki and I'm also working in the UI5 smart controls area in the team which is based in Sofia, Bulgaria. Uh, like Dobromiro already told you, I'm going to speak about the money part of our application. So let's begin. Business applications like ours are often using different currencies and units of measure. Until recently, the possibility to work with currencies and units of measure provided by the UI5 was not that flexible. There was always a predefined code list into the model, which was holding mapped values and was taking care for the formatting and the validation of them. For example, if we check 
our cost smart field, we are able to see that we have a value and it has a currency equal to euro. If let's check the value, we are having exactly two decimal places after the delimiter. It is like that because into the code list, which is in, mapped into the model, we are having that for euro, we are going to have exactly two decimal places after the, of the delimiter. Similar to the currencies, now we are also having a predefined into the model code list for all of the units of measure. It's good that in the standard scenario and apps, you're having this logic out of the box. But what if you're having a custom scenario and the formatting doesn't suit you for some of the units of measure? The solution is simple. You just need to provide a custom code into your model. Um, this is done and could be done by simply adding an annotation to your application. And this annotation is going to say to your model that you're going to have a custom code list. Once the annotations are added, a request for the custom list is going to be sent to the backend. This request is going to be sent only once. After that, the functionality will come out of the box from the framework. When these annotations are added, the smart fields are going to take care for the validation and the formatting of the values according to the definition in the code list defined into the model, but also according to the corresponding entity collection defined into the property of the definition of the metadata. Now I'm going to show you the annotation which is defined in our demo app. Here in the highlighted code, you're able to see the defined annotation. We are having two definitions correspondingly for the unit of measure and for the currencies. Like I've already told you, our smart field will take care about the validation and the formatting uh, of the values, depending on this notation and exactly depending on the collection path, which is given here. The name of this, which is given here, is holding an entity collection. Let's see what we are having in this entity collection. We are highlighted the entity collection of the unit of measure. Here you're able to see uh, predefined properties which are going to display in your custom unit of measure in this scenario. Your example, you're able to see in this example that we're having property unit of code, for example, or decimal places. Now let's check the data which is coming from the backend. In our demo app scenario, you're able to see again the predefined names of the properties of the entity collection, and that they're holding some values here. For example, for green code, we have the abbreviation KG with long text kilogram and decimal places three. And for the milligrams, we are having a new Unicode with abbreviation MG and decimal places two. But what does this mean for us and why I'm showing this to you? Let's go back to our demo application and check the quality available in the warehouse. We have some value and as a unit of measure, we're having the kilograms. Like we saw in our custom code list, we defined that the decimal places after the delimiter are going to be three. Now let's check to the milligrams. We're having two decimal places after the delimiter. You've already saw how the smart field automatically formatted the value. But what will happen if I type more decimal places after the delimiter. An error. The smart field is also taking care for the validation like I told you earlier. It will point to us that we have an error and that we need the maximum two decimal places after the delimiter like it was defined into the code list. Keep in mind that the custom code list is always going to override the local defined one. So speaking of currencies and units of measure, uh, you know that all over the world there are thousands and huge of amounts. So it will be very easy for us if there is a control which is supporting to find the exactly needed from us one. So here for the rescue comes our biofield dialogue control. The last year we took care also to improve the accessibility side of our controls. And today I want to also briefly mention the improvements that we made in our value hill dialogue control. 
So let's start with the structure of this control. What we are able to see on our screen, we have a search field, some go button, some show how to hide filters button, and a table with some records in it. One of the improvements that we were able to make for the accessibility side of our control is connected with the screen reader. The first improvement that I'm going to speak about is that when our screen reader points to the table, now we are able to hear, to be spoken for us, the size of the rows which are in our table. Another improvement connected with the screen reader is about the search action. If I type G here, for example, and trigger the search, you're able to see that our table is queried. How the screen reader will handle that? After I trigger the search, our screen reader will tell us that search is complete and our result is in this scenario three. I'm sure that you're aware that the accessibility is not only connected with the screen reader. Some of the improvements that we are also able to make are connected to, for example, with some unneedful tooltips, which we removed because of confusions. Also, we have added area descriptions to these two filter fields that we're able to see in the uh, defined condition scenario of our value help dialog. Now, with these area descriptions, it's, for, it's easier for the user to understand what is the job of these fields and how they could support the user. Another small but important improvement is to have the initial focus on the correct control at the beginning. You're able to see that we are making small but sure steps to achieve our goal and have an easy to use controls from everybody. Now let's go back to our presentation. Here, after the demo slide, you will find a documentation and references slide where with Dubromira, we tried to collect some interesting links in which you can find more details about the topics that we have covered in our presentation today. Thank you very much for your attention. And now it's time for some questions if you have. All right. Oh, wow. That's a surprise. Nice to see you too in, uh, in the same room. All right. Thanks a lot for that presentation. And uh, we'll start with one question from the uh, virtual audience and it had to come. It's uh, smart controls and OData v4. Anyway, those two are working. Uh, sorry, but we talk about in our uh, session about uh, smart controls v2. Uh, the, the v4 controls are to our colleagues, which are based in uh, Germany. And maybe if someone from them is here, can answer for any question in that case, but the, uh, oh, oh, our demo is made uh, for V2 controls. Sorry if we didn't add it as an information in the beginning. That's all right. Okay. But, but in general, our V2 and V4 control are pretty, uh, we are going in the direction to be pretty similar as a functionality and we are working on this. Cool, thanks. Do we have any more questions in the on-site audience? We've got a mic we can throw around. I would love to test it. I would love to see you guys catch it. Yeah, we got one. <laughs> wow. So it's not really a question, but also a follow-up answer to the question that was there. So if you're interested in how we do it in V4, we have a presentation today at 5.50 p.m. And there we talk about pretty much the same, but for ODATA V4 and uh, the building blocks, as we call them, for ODATA V4. There we Thank go. You. Perfect. Thanks a lot. All right. Who, who else wants to catch that flying mic? All right. That's good. Okay, then uh, thanks a lot to you too for that presentation.